Hi, I'm Dave Forsyth and welcome to episode 6 of our video podcast series, Avid Tips and Techniques. Avid Media Composer is more than just a great editing application. It's also like an assistant editor that does a lot of work in the background for you to help you out. One of the ways it does this is through the Attic Folder. Now you might have heard of the Attic Folder, but what is the Attic Folder? Where is it? And why is it there in the first place? Well put very simply, the Attic Folder contains archived copies of your bins. Every time a bin gets saved, a copy is placed in the Attic Folder. Now a bin can be saved either automatically through the Auto Save feature or manually by selecting a bin and choosing File Save Bin. The Auto Save feature is found here in the Bin Settings. And we might come back and visit this another time. But for now, I'm just going to make a small change to the Titles Bin. So I'm going to rename this Title Closer Version 5. I'm going to just put a number 6 there instead. So when I do that, you'll see a little asterisk appear next to the bin name. Now the asterisk actually means two things. Number one, that something in the bin has changed. The second thing it means is that the change has not yet been saved. So I will save the change by selecting the bin and then choosing Save Bin from the File menu. The asterisk next to the bin name now disappears, meaning that the bin no longer contains unsaved changes. OK, so when the titles bin was saved, the system took a snapshot of it and placed it in the Attic folder. The Attic folder is located wherever you have Media Composer installed, which is nearly always the C drive. So I'm going to go to My Computer, into the C drive, to Program Files, to Avid, to Avid Media Composer, and there's my Avid Attic folder right there. Now inside the Attic folder, I find other folders which have the same names as projects which have ever lived on this system. Now, in this particular case, the only project that's lived on this system is the podcast project. So that's why I only have one folder in there right now. Now the attic folder can get pretty large after a while because bins are being copied to it all the time. So once you've finished with a project, by all means take the project file off the system and archive it, but also take the project's attic as well. If I open up the podcasts folder, I'll find another folder called bins. If I open up the bins folder, I find other folders in there bearing the same names as the bins in the project. Now the bin I saved earlier was called titles. So if I open up the folder called titles, then I'll find the five most recent copies of the titles bin. Now 5 is the default number and can be changed in the bin settings. You can see here the copy that was saved only a few minutes ago. So what? The attic folder contains old bins. Big deal. How is that supposed to help me? Well it does help you and big time. Consider the following scenario. Okay, so this is my sequences bin. It contains all the sequences that I'm working on right now. Now what if I select this sequence here, hit the delete key, check the box and hit OK. Right, job done. But what if I'd made a mistake? What if I deleted the wrong version of the sequence? Well, if I go to the edit menu I'll discover that that action is not undoable. So is it all over? Well, no it isn't, because of the attic. The first thing I'm going to do is delete this bin altogether. I don't need it because the copy in the attic actually contains everything that I need. I will now go back to the attic using the same path as we used before. So I'm going back to my computer, to the C drive, to the program files folder, to the Avid folder, to the Avid Media Composer folder, then to the Avid Attic, 
then to podcasts, to bins, then my sequences folder. Okay. Now you would think that I would simply grab the most recent one, but this is not the case. The most recent one, which is sequences.8, is the copy of the bin that was created when I closed the bin after I deleted the sequence. You can see that the size of the bin is also smaller than the others. Therefore, I need the next oldest copy of the bin, which is this one here, or sequences.7. You can see the difference in file size indicating this copy actually contains more data than the sequences.8 copy. So the file size as well as the date can give you real clues as to the most appropriate copy to get you out of trouble. So now I'm going to copy the bin by right clicking and choosing copy. Now I don't want to take the original because if something happens to it, I no longer have anything to fall back on in the attic. I now need to navigate to my project. This could be anywhere, but by default the project can be found inside the Avid Projects folder. So I'm going to open up the My Documents folder, which contains the Avid Projects folder. When I open that, it contains my podcasts project. I open that, go to my episode 6 folder, and right click and paste. Now I could leave the bin called sequences.7 and Media Composer would be totally cool with that. But if I make a change to that bin, the system will create a new folder in the attic called sequences.7 because as far as the system is concerned, it's a brand new bin. Now that can get pretty unwieldy. So I'm going to remove the .7 from the end of the bin name so it matches the original name. Remember, there's no substitute for proper project management. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to take away the .7 at the end of that file name. Click away from it and go back to Media Composer. So you can see now my newly copied sequences bin appears in the episode 6 folder. I can double click that bin now and open it up and I can see that it now contains both of my sequences. So what you've seen in this video is taken from the MC101 Editing with Avid Media Composer course. You can get more information on this course and all of our other course offerings at www.avap.com.au. If you have any questions or comments about this video, you can email me at dforsyth at ambertech.com.au. So the attic folder is not such a big mystery after all. So easy to use and quite frankly, it saved my bacon more times than I'd be prepared to admit to. Now, hopefully you'll never have to use it, but if you do, now you know how. So until next time, I'm Dave Forsyth. Cheers for now.